Alright, so in this video we're going to look at uh, the other uh, ex next example for hypothesis testing. And uh, if you just watched the first video on the z-test, uh, we're going to go ahead and work with that spreadsheet we created and just sort of modify it. Um, we're going to use example 916 from the book, which is on page 484. And uh, still, uh, let's read the problem first. Statistics students believe the mean score on the first statistics test is 65. A statistics instructor thinks the mean score is higher than 65. He samples 10 statistics students and obtains the scores 65, 65, 70, 67, 66, 63, 63, 68, 72, 71. He performs a hypothesis test using a 5% level of significance. The data are assumed to be from a normal distribution. Okay. So this is uh, still testing the mean, clearly, right, since we're looking at uh, finding the mean uh, score, test score. Um, but this is with the population standard deviation unknown. Right? You know, notice if you read through the problem, we are not given any population standard deviation, thus it is unknown. Um, this is going to be the case where we have sample data, so let's go over there. All right. uh, your hypotheses still have the same uh, symbol, mu, because it's a mean test. Um, but if you think about the uh, instructor's claim, a statistics instructor thinks the mean score is higher than 65. Right, that right there is the claim of the instructor. That is your alternative hypothesis. Right, and of course, that translates to the mean being greater than 65. Right, higher than 65 is greater than 65. So of course, this is a 65 here as well, and the null can stay as equals, or you can make it a less than or equal. So this is a right-tailed test because of the inequality sign there pointing to the right. Now, we are not able to use the normal distribution because sigma or population standard deviation is unknown. Um, in order to use the t distribution, uh, we just need to know that the data are from a normal distribution originally. And then we can have a small sample size, we can have um, no population standard deviation, and we can work just with sample data. Um, but you notice that we are told the data is from a normal distribution. Uh, and perf uh, I think you need no outliers as well. Um, a lot of times you, you don't know that for sure. You can make that assumption and work with the t-test anyway. So those are the requirements there for the t-distribution to be used. Uh, the level of significance here is the same. It's 5%. And uh, then we go down to our sample statistics. All right. So remember these are actually calculated and in the t-test case we don't have a population standard deviation we have a sample standard deviation so the uh, sample standard deviation will be calculated as well. All right. well we need to put in our sample data Oops. so let's go ahead and type those numbers in And just delete the empty or the numbers we didn't use. All right. Now the sample mean is correct, the sample size is correct, but we need to have the standard deviation be a calculation here. So we'll do equals STDEV and then we'll select the sample data. And uh, you can go just as far down as you need or to make this usable more for later larger data sets you can go down really far. So hit page down a few times, close parentheses and uh, you see I went down to 80 so that'll cover you for you know, sample size of about 60 which is fine certainly for anything in this course All right. so now we have that and that's a calculation alright uh, well we can't approach the uh, p-value calculation the same way as we can with the normal distribution and that's because of Excel's limitations um, you notice if I just try to take something like this, right, and replace it with, instead of norm dist, right, the equivalent t dist, um, yeah, t dist, 
you'll notice that it wants to know where to uh, draw the line on the distribution and it wants the degrees of freedom and the number of tails and it does not allow you to specify the standard deviation so what they've done here is they've only given you the standardized t distribution remember for the normal distribution when that was first brought up there was the standard normal distribution and it had the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one well that's what they're giving us here for the t distribution so they're only giving us the standard one and that means that we have to standardize our uh, our test our, sorry our um, our sample statistics we have to standardize them in order to find this um, a picture so it's not going to like what I have there. Okay, so the picture we're looking at here is still going to hold, um, but we can't actually use that distribution directly. All right, so there's a little shortcut in between, uh, sort of a middle step, and it's called the test statistic, and that's what we're going to have here. It's our test statistic. Actually, we don't want it there. We still want the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, I guess. No, we don't. Let's do that. So, test statistic. All right. So, the test statistic is basically like a z score, if you remember that calculation. And uh, uh, remember the z score, you take the individual, and the individual here is going to be the sample mean and then you subtract the population mean and that's going to be the um, this number here right and then you divide by the standard deviation and so we'll use the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size right that's the normal uh, standardized error. Uh, take the standard deviation and divide by the square root of the sample size. That's because of the central limit theorem. That's your standard deviation for your sampling distribution, right? Okay, and so that's a that's a z-score formula. You have uh, the individual minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, but we're using the sampling distribution there. So that standardizes that number. Um, now one thing I notice is this sample mean is not coming out the way they have it in the, in the books. Let me check my numbers. Oh, there's a 16 down here that I didn't get rid of. So you got to be real careful with uh, this technique here. All right, so it should be 67. Uh, you want you want all these things to be cleared out after the data set, okay? Um, and then it's 10, 10 scores here. Okay, so 67 uh, sample size 10. There's our standard deviation. There's the test statistic, and we're now ready to calculate a p-value. So uh, I think that the right-tailed test is actually the first one to tackle because when you use this t-dist command, uh, of course you use the test statistic and degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one and if you're doing a left-tailed or right-tailed case then tails is one All right, that's the one-tailed version t-dist is actually set up for doing right-tailed tests i believe so i think we do this right we've told it that's where you draw the line and there's your degrees of freedom is one minus that and we're doing a right-tailed test and you can see that this does match up with the p-value here we're going to go ahead and go ahead and snip that out. All right. So, um, so yeah, the the t-dist thing is is set up for doing right-tailed tests, and it wants a positive test statistic. So in the right tail case, everything's going to work out fine. Um, suppose we went through this with the left tailed test. Okay, then your test statistic, right? That's it tells you how many standard deviations you are above or below the mean. So positive is on the right, negative is on the left. Right? Think of it as a z-score. I mean, technically it's like a t-score because we're using the t-distribution. But um, if you did a left tailed test, that test statistic would be negative. 
right? And uh, because you'd be over here on the left. And it doesn't want negative numbers for this. Um, but because of the symmetry, uh, you could just throw that tail onto the right by putting in a negative sign. So here's the fix for a left tail test. Supposing we had a negative there, we would use t dist, and we would do negative this number. Right? Now that's going to make it negative, and it's going to cause an error here because we want a right tail test. Um, but if that number were negative, the right tail one would come up with an error sign and uh, left tail would be the correct value. So, so you really just want to look at the correct p-value calculation here. So you need a negative there. Um, again, you can click on this and tdist help menu in off, off Excel and, and get more information. Do minus one and then tails is still one. All right, so it doesn't like that. Um, but say I was doing a, a left tail test, right, and my sample mean was, I don't know, less than 65, say 62. It gives you the negative test statistic because you're over on the left side, and then that gives you a p-value that makes sense. Okay, so that's set up to work. Left-tailed is only going to work when you're doing a left-tailed test, and right-tailed is only going to work when you're doing a right-tailed test. All right, uh, so now we want two-tailed, and the way I'm going to work this is I'm using t-dist again. Uh, I want this to work no matter what, so I'm going to do absolute value. That's going to make it positive either way. And then degrees of freedom is this minus one, and tails is two, and it'll automatically know to uh, double it. And you could do some other way of having to double this one or double that one, depending on which value is correct. Um, but this is what I'm going to use. So yeah. take a look at that formula. Okay, so it's a little bit different from how we handled the different cases for normal distribution, and that's because of having to standardize things. We have it, and uh, we do get the right number there. Uh, okay, so what's our decision? Um, remember that uh, alpha was 0 0.05, the p-value is 0 0.039, so p is less than alpha, so we would still reject the null hypothesis. And rejecting the null means that you support the claim, or the alternative, sorry, the alternative, which just so happens to be the claim. Uh, the sample data supports the claim that the instructor made, and I'm going to go back to this, that the average test score was, we'll say higher, we'll use the same language higher than 65. Okay, So again, we rejected the null, which means we supported the alternative, and that's that the average was greater than 65. And, and I just put that back in terms of any claim that might have been made um, to really address the problem. All right, we can kind of copy all this stuff over here to this side. Uh, the one difference is that uh, if you had sample data all summarized already, then this would just be an input value. So you would just have to type these numbers in. So let's, I mean, we can make it match up here. 65, 65, greater than. And then here we just, they would tell us the sample mean, they already have it averaged up, and they would tell us standard deviation. Sometimes they do this just to save time because they know you know how to calculate the mean and standard deviation at this point. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just copy these over because these are the same. And uh, copy that. and copy that. All right. So this shows you how to do some uh, t-test stuff. You can now reuse your spreadsheet. Um, let's just rename it t-test and uh, you're good to go.